So I'm Dr. Anthony Collado, I'm a board certified psychiatrist. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about five Bible verses for mental health. And the first verse that comes to mind is written by King Solomon in the book of Proverbs. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. I'm gonna give you a little bit of scientific basis how anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. The body's nervous system is always active and it basically has two com major components that interact with one each other. So there's the parasympathetic nervous system and there's the sympathetic nervous system. And so when the parasympathetic is active, the sympathetic is not. And conversely, when the sympathetic is active, the parasympathetic is not as active. The parasympathetic nervous system is basically controlled by the vagus nerve that controls like the breathing, the digestive system. It's called the rest and digest response. Whereas the sympathetic nervous system is more this fight or flight response that the body goes to. It's like that adrenaline rush that people Feel. And it starts with the brain in the region called the hypothalamus and then the hypothalamus will secrete hormones to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland will further secrete hormones to the body including the adrenal gland that releases a hormone called cortisol which is like the stress response and cortisol can be this uh, notion that can increase heart rate, it can lead to metabolism changes. It basically will start sending signals to the body to a fight or flight response. Now when this hormone is too high or too low, that equilibrium that the body likes is going to be out of whack and it can lead to depression. So when anxiety is too high, that can cause this hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis to be too active and that can lead to depression also. Just like King Solomon says in his Proverbs, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. The second verse says, a good word makes it glad. And we know that practicing gratitude is important for one's mood, for one's health. It is more difficult for thoughts of anxiety or depression to come into one's life when one practices gratitude. So being kind, thinking good thoughts, those are incredibly important. The second Bible verse I'm gonna talk about comes from St. Paul to his letter to the Philippians, where he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So I think basically we need various things in our life uh, for us to survive, for our needs, for our wants, our desires. And we can't get too worked up or too overly concerned about these things because some of them might be in control and some of them might not be in our control. But I think this verse also helps remind us that God is like our heavenly father who can provide us for what our soul really needs and desires. This sort of is a segue to the next verse which says, in the multitudes of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. So it's just another verse that shows that we can't get worried too much about our things in life, but really we can find comfort in God and it's God who really that mankind yearns for and wants to have that relationship with and really it's gonna give us that sense of peace and security and trust in our life. So I guess the question may come, what are God's comforts? I would say maybe prayer, just trusting that God will listen to what one says, what's in the one's heart, what their innermost emotions, desires are. Maybe it's comfort through reading the Bible, understanding how God works in the lives of other people and in the lives of of ourselves. Maybe it's just understanding his promises or miracles. Maybe that'll help bring someone comfort. So what do you think are God's comforts? Let me know in the comments. The next verse, actually one of the first times I've really heard it was through Oprah Winfrey. She, when she commented on this verse, it says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You know, I think it shows that for whatever things that we strive and work for, as long as we can see God in the picture and God in the midst of it and keep him close in our life, then feeling that notion of peace, kindness, goodness, joy, gentleness, those are the things that God wants for, for us in our lives. And also it's likely that when we strive for these qualities, God is going to be better able to work in us to do what is good and pleasing according to his will. Those are just some of my thoughts on it. If you have other perspectives or other interpretations, please let me know in the comments. I would really like to hear them. But the last verse I'm gonna talk about is from the Epistle of St. James. He says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Praying is just us speaking to God. And so give us an opportunity where we can let God know all our inner hearts, our inner thoughts, emotions, feelings, desires, what really is that it's troubling us, whether it's pain, difficulties, sorrows. And we can trust that God can 
turn all of that negativity and all that frustration into something positive in some way that we just might not be able to understand, but we can just be ready. I think this is a great reminder that there's this challenges, problems, there's adverse events in our life, and maybe it's in our life so that we get closer to God one way or another. And so we can't really do it on our own accord. And when we pray, we're really showing that humility and we're really trusting that God can help provide for us, can help watch over us, can help give us what we need to get through the problem and have a solution to the problem. Also, I think when we put it in God's hands, it's gonna be better because we're not gonna blame those people in our environment or those people around us who shouldn't be blamed. We don't want to you know, put our problems onto other people, but if we give our problems to God and God can provide a solution for us or help us with the solution. All these verses, there's a common theme basically to have comfort and solace in God. We don't want to take things into our own hands too much. We don't want to self-medicate with alcohol or drugs when we're feeling anxious or worried. Um, we really want to find that enjoyment and that hope in what God can provide for us.